what she showed was that consistency of total sleep duration was far more important for performance on these exams than total sleep duration itself. Mm. So it's not that just getting more sleep allows you to perform better. Consistently getting about the same amount of sleep is more, is better for performance, at least in on OCHEM, yeah. than just getting more. And There's no evidence that eight is better than six, that you could very well do better on six than on eight. There are a few other things that um, turn out to be strong parameters for success in this domain. For instance, your entire life, waking or asleep, is broken up into these 90 minute ultradian cycles. If you look at ability to attend or do math problems or do anything, you know, drive, performance tends to ramp up slowly within a 90 minute cycle, peak, and then come down at the end of that 90 minute cycle. And in sleep, we go through these stage one, two, three, four, REM, et cetera. We can talk more about that if you like. Those on 90 minute ultradian cycles as well. Ending your sleep after a 90 minute cycle at the, at the near the end of a 90 minute cycle, say at the end of six hours, in many cases is better for you than sleeping an additional hour, seven hours and waking mm -hmm. up in the middle of an ultradian cycle. And there are a few apps that can measure this based on body movements and things like that, that have you, your alarm go off at the end of an ultradian yeah, cycle. Yeah. And if you wake up in the middle of an ultradian cycle, sometimes not always, you can be very groggy for a long period of time. I certainly do better on six hours than I do on seven. I happen to like an eight hour sleep, it feels great, but I haven't slept an entire eight hours without waking up in the middle of the night at some point in, I don't know, forever. I can't, I can't remember, it's probably some point in infancy, but, and I function well during the day. I think that that's a big, that's an important parameter is how do you feel during the day? Almost everybody experiences some sort of dip in energy in the late afternoon or what would correlate to their temperature peak. And that's a good time of day to get either a 90, 90 minute or less nap. Or if you're not a napper or you can't nap, feet elevated has been shown to be good for clear out of some of this, um, the glymphatic system is this kind of like sewer system of the brain that you can clear stuff out. So I also respectfully, uh, or semi-respectfully disagree with the idea that you can't recover lost sleep. What does that mean? I mean, that there's no IRS for sleep. So what does it mean to be in debt for sleep? If you're falling asleep during the day and you're sleepy, like you're falling asleep, that's a good sign of insomnia. It means you're not sleeping enough at night. If you're fatigued during the day, but you're not falling asleep, so you're just exhausted, but you're not finding yourself falling asleep in meetings and in conversation, then chances are you're fatiguing your system through something else, like a long run in the middle of the night in yeah, Boston yeah, or whatever yeah. it is that you're up to lately at uh, 3 a.m. Yes, there is a magic to the nap. And I mean, maybe you could speak to the, because you mentioned these protocols that don't necessarily, so they're non-sleep. But to me, the nap one or two a day can, almost irrespective of how much sleep I get the night before. I uh, have a fundamental change in my mood and my performance. For the better or for the worse? For the better, for mm -hmm. the better. Yeah, likewise. So uh, I do tend to kind of experiment with durations. It's, it, it's consistently surprising to me how like a nap of like 10 minutes, <laughs> I don't know, maybe you can speak to the perfect duration of a nap, but I find that it's like magic that a short nap does as much good and often better than a longer one for me, for me, subjective. What experience. would be a longer one? Longer uh, than 90 minutes? No, no, like 90 minutes or but longer than 90 minutes, like two hours. Yeah, that's dropping you, starting to drop you into REM sleep. And even if it's a tiny amount of REM sleep, people can come out of those naps kind of disoriented. Right. I mean, remember in sleep, space and time are, are totally uncoupled and so they, that's an odd state to re-enter the world in if you're not gonna stay there for a while, like for a good night's sleep. I think a 20 minute nap is pretty fantastic. Would you say that's the, op if you were to recommend to the general, it's, it's very weird to recommend anything to the general populace because obviously it's very person specific, but what's a good one where you say to friends, is 20 minutes a good 20 or 30 minutes. 20 or 30 minutes, because you're going, unless you're sleep deprived, you're going to stay out of REM sleep rapid eye movement sleep. If you're sleep deprived, you'll drop right into it. If you've ever traveled and you're really jet lagged, you go to the hotel, you lay down for one second, all of a sudden you're just like, you're you're in a psychedelic 
dream, um, which can be pretty great too. Um, <laughs> but I think that uh, 20, 30 minutes 